بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد اي رحمه في الله قال الشيخ مقبل بن هادي الوادعي الله يرحمه في هذه دعوتنا وعقيدتنا this is our creed and this is our path after mentioning jamaat tabliq or the sheikh actually mentioned some other points so went a bit more extensive than he did about akhwan muslimin he mentioned about jamaat tabliq as a group yaruna an da'wata il tawhid tanfir al ummah tanfir lil ummah he said that they believe that the call to tawhid is something which causes the ummah to split or be divisive meaning that jamaat tabliq that although they have their kalimat al ikhlas in their six points they don't like to go extensive in talking about tawhid that they rarely go beyond talking about tawhid al rububiyya meaning the lordship of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they don't get into depth they won't talk extensively about things like uluhiyah about the worship of allah alone because they feel that it will be divisive in their dawah we already narrated a, a true story that we uh that some of the brothers that i had some cooperation in dawah in ethiopia some of our brothers from ahlus sunna that they had experienced and the result of that of actually the imam being pulled off the mimbar during the khutbah and beaten by members of jamaat tabliq because they felt he was talking too extensively about tawhid and that it was dividing it was divisive and we know that this minhaj as a methodology is not in accordance to the minhaj al anbiya al shaykh rabi al madkhali hafizallahu ta'ala mentioned in his book and he mentioned the ayat some of the nusus he mentioned to back up his claim that the dawah of the anbiya is the dawah to to pure tawhid that all the prophets and messengers alayhi ma'athu salatu salam that they call to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitabi al-kareem wa laqad ba'athna fi kulli ummati rasulan an na'budu Allah wa ijtanibu ta'bud that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that we sent we have sent to every nation a messenger to worship Allah alone and avoid those things worship beside him the ta'bud and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitabi al-kareem wa abudu Allah wa la tushriku bi shay'in and worship Allah alone and do not worship anything besides him let us know that the call that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a command to worship him and him alone and he negates and prohibits worshiping other than him so that that worship is pure and that's pure tawhid that's the call to pure tawhid that's the da'wah to anbiya it isn't just rububiyya because rububiyya the lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you ask the mushrikeen uh those people who worship other than all Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the idol, uh, they worship idols statues they worship Jesus alayhi salatu wasalam some worship Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam those people will, will will also talk about the lordship of Allah the Jews and the Christians they talk about the lordship of Allah even the Hindus you'll find them uh say talking about the lordship of God or the lordship of Allah but yet then they have many hundreds perhaps thousands of other gods in and 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 manifestations of god that they believe in the point being habita fil that da'wah to tawhid the pure da'wah to tawhid the da'wah to ahlus sunnah the da'wah to anbiya is based on calling to all the aspects of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh all aspects of tawhid meaning the lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that he should be worshiped alone 
with all the aspects of worship. All worship is directed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And likewise, the divine names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are unique to Him alone, subhanahu. So all of that uh, encompasses Tawheed, and that's all a part of our call to Tawheed and worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Then the Shaykh said, he also mentioned from uh, that Tawheed, of course, is the source of uniting the Muslims. And that when people call to other than Tawheed, then this is actually the divisiveness. This actually caused division. Although Tawheed does uh, separate the Muahideen, Ahl Tawheed, from the, uh, from the disbelievers, no doubt, and from Ahl Bid'ah in their various uh, levels, those, those that have khalal and shortcomings in their concept of Tawheed. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al Karim, Ula tukunu min al mushrikeen, min al ladina farraku deenuhum wa kanu shia. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al Rum that do not be from the mushrikeen, you know, do not be uh, from those who uh, associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those from those who divide their religion and were in sects or groups. And Shaykh Ahmed al-Najmi he also mentioned with this regard, he said, أَنَّهُمْ يَبْغَضُونَ الدُّعَاتِ التَّوْحِيدِ وَيَحَرَبُونَهُمْ That uh, Shaykh Ahmed al-Najmi he mentioned that regarding the Jama'at, the Jama'at al-Tabiq, that they had enmity, or that they possess enmity towards the callers to Tawheed, and they fight them. And these claims of these great Imams of Ahl Sunnah, these contemporary Imams, are not claims based on desires. These are claims, uh, these are things uh, that are substantiated from their own experiences and from the experience of so many callers to Tawheed and Ahl Sunnah and so many people who were favored by Allah to be blessed to leave the Jama'at, people who, had, who were insiders to the Jama'at, who had made Khuruj for five, ten years or whatever the situation may be, who had had experience, who, me personally, I, I haven't made Khuruj with Jama'at at the Bleak. I didn't even when I was a new Muslim, but I would sit and listen to them and I have enough experience to have seen in different parts of America what they do and in Yemen and uh, and in Ethiopia and have met people who were had their experience with them here in uh, Saudi Arabia and also I've experienced them in their dawah in the United Arab Emirates and there I had even one of the people who was responsible, a person in position of government, a ch in charge of a, a, one of the administrations there in UAE. And he asked me, why don't you go khuruj fi sabidillah? Why don't you go fi sabidillah? I said, I did come fi sabidillah. That's how I ended up here. Because I had just come from Yemen, sitting with Sheikh Muqbil for uh, a brief time. And, and also, uh, you know, so I had left America with my wealth striving to learn something about Islam, to improve my, my knowledge on, on Islam. So I'll, that was Fisibilillah. But what he meant is even with my limited knowledge at the time that I should go Fisibilillah and sit with the Jama'ah and call to whatever they call to, call to the prayer and, and their other six points. And I mentioned to him also that, you know, the reason I left America was to increase my knowledge, not to just come and to give dawah around the world with no knowledge and join those who uh, were upon that. So it just goes to show you, and the, my personal experience, and the experience of hundreds of people, and many, many people that I've, I've talked to, perhaps thousands, we could even say, because many people who have left the Jama'ah, who function with the Jama'ah, and many of the ulama, their experiences, and the experiences of their tulab, that this has been the case 
is that they, uh, these experiences with Jama'at to Tabliq, and that they build their Jama'at on ignorance. Sheikh, uh, uh, Sheikh Atwajri, Rahmatullah, and he also mentioned, أَنَّهُمْ أَهْرَكُوا بَعْدَ كُتُبَ التوحيد. In his book, which is a famous book, Al-Qawlul Balir, uh, he mentioned that uh, in the, his experience also, that they burn some of the books of Tawheed. And it just goes to show the enmity towards Ahl Sunnah and Ahl Tawheed, that Jama'at Tabliq, as a Jama'at in general, that they suffer from the sickness. Also, Yaruna in a Dawah al Sunnah Tanfirin Tanfirin Lil Ummah, that they also believe that calling to the Sunnah also causes people to flee. That speaking excessively about the Sunnah and aspects of the Sunnah, the Prophet وسلم, that this will cause division. So they try to refrain from those. Anything that they feel is controversial with regards to their Dawah to the Muslims, then they try to leave it. And the Sheikh uh, Rukhbah, he mentioned, وَحَكَذَا يَرُونَ بِمُنَاذِرْ الْبِدَعْ and the Sunnah Tafarak Lil Ummah Wallah Azza wa Jal Yaqul Fi Kitabi Al Kareem Walla Ta Tabiyu Subu Fatafarakum Bikuman Sabili Fatafaraka Bikuman Sabili Fasabil Allah Wahid Usubul Al Bida Kathira Mutafaraka Fahi Alati Tafarak Wutahawan Al Sunnah Halak Wusabab Lil Fitna قال الله عز وجل فليحذر الذين مخالفون يخالفون عن أمره أن تصيبهم فتنة أو يصيبهم عذاب عليم ويقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من رغب عن سنتي فليس مني uh, The Sheikh mentioned رحمة الله عليه in his book نسائي 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 الفواكه he mentioned Rahmatullah he said, and likewise, that they believe uh, in, you know, using bid'ah over the sunnah and dividing the ummah, and that this divides the ummah. And he says, Allah, the Almighty, said in his book, and do not follow the various paths and divide and separate from uh, his, his path, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's path of Surat Allah Mustaqim. And then he said that the Sabil Allah, the path of Allah is one. And the paths of Bidah are many and they're divided. And they what divide the people. And being lazy with regards to the Sunnah is a source of destruction. And it is the reason and cause for fitna. You know, for dis uh, for disharmony and discord. And Allah the Almighty says in his book then beware of those who differ on uh, from his affair that they that will befall them a trial or f befall them a painful torment and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whoever desires other than my sunnah then he is not from me so all of these are nusus to show us the importance of following Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and, and the minhaj of the Salaf of this Ummah that the Dawah to Tawheed is one and that it doesn't cause people and the Dawah to Sunnah is one and that it doesn't divide people it only divides Ahl Sunnah from Ahl Bidah Ahl Sunnah from Ahl Kufr Ahl Sunnah from the heretics and so forth that this is how, how it divides and this is why it's important to keep up the call not for the sake of division but the sake of distinguishing the call to Tawheed and upholding what Allah wants from us. And that's the true Dawah. It's not the Dawah to Khuruj 40 days and other than this. يقول أميرهم بالحديدة بدا تجمع الناس خير من السنة تفرق بينهما So the Shaykh also mentioned, he said, that one of their emirs in Hudayda, one of their... Uh, they are mirrors of the Jamaat at Tabliq. And so these are from the Arabs. These people who know the Arabic language. These are Yemeni uh, Jamaat at Tabliq. 
uh, one of their emirs is famous in the province of Hodeida in Yemen. He said that bid'a, it causes, it's a source of people, or, or bid'a, that uh, causes people to unite is better than sunnah, which divides them. So that needs no explanation, the level of ignorance and the level and the evil of such a statement. And, per, and, and no doubt has to come from only someone who is very ignorant and following their desires. And that to say that intentionally is perhaps, uh, if, if the person is not excused by ignorance, is a very serious and dangerous uh, statement and type of dawa. And the reason behind statements like this, especially in Hodeida and those places, because the people, uh, a lot of extreme Sufis, are known to inhabit and, and have a history in these areas. And the ignorance and the practices, and they're believing that Allah is one with the creation, or Allah is everywhere, and their grave worship are well known in those, those areas. So the, a statement like that is not surprising that someone who comes from a background such as that would make such a statement that uh, bid'a that unites people is better than sunnah which divides people. So this is a, 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 a terrible, wicked statement. And then the Sheikh says, يُقُونُ عَدَّاوَةِ لِأَهْلُ sunnah And also that they have enmity towards Ahlul sunnah يُزْهَدُونَ النَّاسِ عَنَ الْعِلْمِ النَّافِيَةِ تَلْمِيهِنْ وَتَصْرِيهِنْ And also he mentioned that they uh, keep the people away from beneficial knowledge. Openly and privately they discourage it. So they don't encourage in general to seek knowledge, but rather they encourage just to sit in their halaqat, just to, to make khuruj, to have their, uh, their other uh, gatherings and so forth. But they don't encourage you and, and pay for you to go seek the knowledge or, or teach the, those people true beneficial knowledge, but they, they discourage people rather. And this is the way of, uh, of Ahlul Bid'ah. And the Salaf of this Ummah spoke extensively about these, uh, about these, these aspects. Uh, some of the other things he mentioned, Rahmatullah Alayhi, يَرَوْنَ أَنَّهُ لَا نَجَالِ النَّاسِ إِلَّا عَنْ طَرِيقِهِمْ وَيَضْرَبُونَ عَلَى ذَلِكَ مِثْلًا بِسَفِينَةَ النُّوحِ مَنْ رَقِبَ مَنْ رَقِبَ فِيهَا نَجَا وَمَنْ لَمْ يَرْقَبْ هَلَكْ وَيَقُولُونَ إِنَّ دَعْوَتَنَا كَسَفِينَةَ النُّوحِ وَقَدْ سَمِعْتَ وَقَدْ سَمِعْتُ هَذَا مِثْلَ مِنْهُمْ فِي الْأُرْضِ وَالْيَمَنِ So he mentions also that Jamaat Tablighi, and this is from personal experience. I think this is from Sheikh. Uh, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab al Wasabi, half of Allah Ta'ala, that he mentioned that they, they believe that their, <coughs> that their da'wah, that whoever, uh, the only way people can be successful, and that's why you hear, my dear respected brothers, our success in this life, you know, always these kind of statements, that they believe that the success is only by their path, their path of da'wah. That's why they're so vigilant about it. And they usually give, uh, many of the Jamaats, they give the example of the, the boat of Nuh, you know, the Safina to Nuh, alayhi salatu wasalam, that whoever, uh, you know, gets on the boat, on the ship, then they will have success. And whoever uh, does not get on the ship will be destroyed. And they say that our dawah is like the ship of Nuh. And he said he has heard this himself from their Jamaats in Urdin, in Jordan, and also in Yemen. So this is not just isolated incidents, but these are two very diverse countries in the Arab Peninsula which have this. And we know that this is the opposite of fiqh fi deen. And this is not the call to ilm and nafia. And this is not the call to ilm in basira and the dawah to tawheed. The Prophet said, Man bihi Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives them understanding of the religion. This is what it requires from us in Dawah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al kareem, Hul hadihi sabili, Id'u ilallahi ala basira, Ana wa mana tabani, Wa subhanallahi wa ma ana min al mushrikeen. 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, say, this is my path, and call to Allah, based on basira, based on insight and wisdom, uh, uh, I, I call to this, and those who follow me, and glory be to Allah, and I'm not one of the mushrikeen, I'm not one of those who worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the path of da'wah, that's, that's what true tawheed and, and the call uh, and, and, the, and the menhaj of Ahlul Sunnah, and this is how Ahlul uh, Tabliq, uh, Jamaat Tabliq, how they differ from this path. Also, لا يهتمون بتوحيد الألوهية وتوحيد الأسماء والصفات and they also don't give precedence to Tawheed al-Uluhiyya wa Tawheed al-Asma'i wa Sifat. And we spoke about this extensively uh, in the prior dars and also in this dars. Uh, what, uh, and also the Shaykh said, إِنَّهُمْ غَيْرَ مُسْتَعْدِينَ لِطَلَبَ الْعِلْمِ وَيَرَوْنَ الْوَقْتِ أَلَّذِي يَصْرَفْ فِي طَلَبَ الْعِلْمِ ضَاعِيًا he also mentioned that they are not prepared to go seek the knowledge, and this is the case for the general uh, Muslims amongst them. However, of course they have ulama from amongst their jama'ah, uh, usually residing in either in Pakistan or in India or you know in, in other places, and they have a lot of ta'awun with, of course, the, you know, because of their also has a relationship with the Diobandi, uh, the Diobandi Dawa and sect, and from amongst them, of course, you have many, you know, they have their ulama, they have their people who are strong in the Arabic language and know uh, hadith and so forth, but yet they still support this jama'ah, and they have their inhiraf and their intawheed, especially with regards to al asma wa sifat they tend to be ashari uh, or maturidiya so you find this this, this jamaat in general that they're away from ilm and we already spoke about that extensively and the importance of of having uh, knowledge before speaking imam bin uthaymin said about jamaat tabliq he said how la yahtajuna ila al ilm wa qad balaghni عن بعدهم أنه لا يرغب في العلم ولا تعم فيه. بن ثيمين رحمة الله عليه said he said those people he's talking about جماعة التبليغ they need knowledge and it has been related to me that some of them have no desire for knowledge absolutely no desire and they are not immersed in knowledge meaning they don't possess knowledge. so those are some of the things. Related to Jamaat Tabliq and what Imam Muqbil rahmatullah said. And we ask that Allah the Almighty guides us and guides those brothers and sisters who participate with that Jamaat. And one last thing I want to mention with regards to them because many of the people, some of the people, some of their claimants, especially from amongst the Arabs or that have had had uh, an upbringing in uh, a, t a background of Tawheed, they'll say, and they'll try to use this as a hujjah, that some of the ulama of Ahl Sunnah, in the beginning of their encounter with Jamaat Tabliq, used to go and used to praise Jamaat Tabliq. And they have statements related to Bin Baz, Rahmatullah Alayhi, and there's fatawa that is, that is printed, that is, is out there, that is true, fatawa that Bin Baz. Uh, bin Uthaymeen and the former Mufti of Saudi Arabia, who, you know, uh, Imam uh, uh, Muhammad, ibn, Muhammad ibn Ibrahim, Rahmatullah alayhi, and some great ulama such as this, that when they became, when they uh, first heard of the Jama'at, when the Jama'at was, was fairly uh, new, their activity was gaining ground, and, and these uh, and it had reached Saudi Arabia and that they had gained knowledge of it when they heard about what they were doing going around calling the people uh, making dawah like that and calling the people back to prayer it sounded to something good because those usul that they mention they have an usul in the religion they're not far they're not uh, from an alien religion they're from Islam their six points are points of Islam 
they're related to Islam. It's however it's their methodology of how to how to implement that and what they mean behind those six points. That when they talk about kalimat al ikhras the kalimat al tawheed, they're not talking about necessarily worshiping Allah alone, but rather they suffice by just talking about rububiya. And as some of the imams mentioned, that that is the same uh, same tawheed of the mushrikeen. You know that there's no difference between that and those fatawa those early fatawa because as as it is well known that Ben Othaymin and uh, Ben Baz went back on their uh, fatwa supporting the Jama'ah and telling people to go with them after they gained more knowledge and this brings up a very important principle and we'll end with this and this is related to fat fatawa that the scholars they mention, this is one of the fiqh principles, the, the qawaid fiqiyah, al-hukm ala shay far'an an tasawarihi. And this means that when a scholar makes a hukm, a ruling upon something, a part of that ruling is having a correct picture of it. So therefore, when those great imams made fatwa saying, yes, you can go with jamaat at the you should go in and correct any mistakes with them, they made those fatawa in the context of their time according to the knowledge that they had of those jamaat. They didn't know extensively a, a lot of the details about the jamaat and those things became to manifest themselves later with later reports and, and experiences of people to get to know who this jamaat at tabliq really was, where their foundation was formed. From. And so this is why it's important that a hukum ala shay farin an tasawri, that when a, a scholar makes a fatwa about a particular situation, for example, a scholar making a fatwa about something that's taking place in Idaho or Seattle, Washington, they have to have accurate information about the situation there. They can't make a fatwa that is a general fatwa about America or a general fatwa about what they understand, but rather they need details to make an accurate fatwa of hukm al al They need an accurate picture before they make an accurate fatwa applicable to the situation or the individuals or the people of that locality. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.